Hey guys, it's Adam from BBT again. So in this question, we'll be looking at how to evaluate a limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cos x over x squared. So in looking at this question, you might ask yourself, where the heck do I start? Well, you know what? It's normal to get that feeling with limits. It's very understandable. What you would do in a question like this is similar to the rationalizing the numerator question. You would multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same um, you know, by the same numbers here, by the same identities here, except you change the sign. So let's look at what would happen. So let me get my little pen here. All right. So look at what would happen. In this question, we would get, remember, always write the limit. I'm not going to repeat it every time. So 1 minus cos x, right? Remember to always multiply it by the opposite sign. So similar to rationalizing the numerator, where you would multiply by the opposite sign, you do the same thing for an expression that has 1 minus cos or 1 plus sign or whatever the case. Don't forget that this is divided by x squared. And what else? The radical, or in this case, the 1 plus cos x. So I'm trying to draw a, simil a similarity for you guys between rationalizing and a question like this, because the process is virtually the same. So what else am I going to do here? You remember to put your limit. So what this allows you to do is if you FOIL it, like in the previous question, you would be left with 1, because 1 times 1 is 1, obviously. And when you multiply the rest, or when you FOIL the rest, you would see that 1 times cos x and negative cos x times 1 cancel out, leaving you with minus cos x squared from the multiplication of the last terms. And don't forget your denominators, please, guys. You must also remember to copy the denominator. When you're doing limits, there's something called the funnel effect, which if you stick to while you're doing your exams or your class tests or your assignments, if you stick to the principle of funnel effect for limits, you will most likely know that you're on the right track. Because most of the time when you're doing an exam, the hardest part is to say, oh my goodness, am I on the right track? Well, the funnel effect is a good guide to let you know if you're on the right track. What the funnel effect is, or what it means rather, is as you're going through your limit, simplifying and doing your algebra part before plugging in your limit, if your limit is getting smaller, or if the terms are getting smaller, you are doing something right. If it's getting bigger, if you're getting more and more terms, you're doing something wrong. So look in this case. We're at the point where we did something of kind of like the rationalizing numerator question, which is falls under the algebra part. Now we're going to ask ourselves, can we do anything more? Can we simplify any further? Well, yes, we can. Look why. 1 minus cos x squared reminds me of something. Isn't this the identity of sine x squared? Hopefully some light bulbs went on. Yes, it is. So identities like this, you'll need to remember for Cal 1, for Cal 2. Let's not worry about Cal 2 right now, but you will need them for Cal 1. So keep this identity, put a star next to it, remind yourself of this identity. It will come back several times. So in this case, look what happens. Instead of writing 1 minus our cos x squared, we'll write sine x squared. And already look at the funnel effect coming into play. 1 minus cos x squared becomes a simpler term of sine x squared. So already, my limit is getting smaller. Therefore, the funnel effect is actually coming into play. What am I left with in the denominator? x squared, 1 plus cos x. So, at this point, if you can reach this part, you're doing a very good job and you're on the right track. Here's where it gets a little tricky. What am I to do now? Here, you will have to break apart your division into several terms. So, you will need to break this up into, look, sine x over x multiplied by sine of x over x multiplied by 1 over 1 plus cos x. And this, this should be all 
in the bracket. So what did I do? I split up, because I have a product everywhere, I can simply split up my one big term into several smaller ones. So I break up my sine x squared into two sines. My x squared, I break up into an x and an x. And then I'm left with a one in the numerator divided by the other term. This will serve you well in, in being able to solve limit questions that look something like this. So, I know that if you, you might be asking yourself, well, the funnel effect here, it doesn't seem like it's coming into play because my limit's getting bigger. In actuality, it isn't because the funnel effect is not only about if you get smaller terms or less terms, it's also if your powers are going down. So remember that. The funnel effect is really two things. Am I getting less terms? If my terms are decreasing, I'm doing a good job. But also, if my powers are decreasing, I'm also following the funnel effect. So you see here, my sine x squared went away. And it went down by one factor. And therefore, I'm still following the funnel effect. So I'm still on the right track. Now remember, here you have the limit as x approaches zero. So I'm going to show you guys a little another little identity that you, that you should take down. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. You have to memorize this one, put it down. You have to remember it. This is an important identity that will help you. Because look what happens here. Look how simple this question becomes. Remember, here we have our limit as x approaches 0. Of what? Sine x over x. So, we can simply just put in our 1 times the same thing again, 1 times, what's this going to be? Well, all we have to do is plug in our limit, which was 0, to see what it gives us. 1 over 1 plus cos of 0. And remember guys, what is the cos of 0? Well, if you look at your unit circle, the cos of 0, remember on your unit circle, cos is the x-coordinate and sine is the y-coordinate. So if you look at the cos of 0, it is nothing more than 1. So let's plug in what we know. 1 plus the cos of 0 is 1. And all of this is 1 over 2. And you are done. So a question that started off quite complicated ended up being rather simple by doing what? by using algebra as our first step. And what did we do? We used the same kind of idea as rationalizing the numerator. Once we did that, we remember the funnel effect and we have to make our limits smaller by remembering in this case that we have trig identities that help us. In this case, one minus cos x squared is nothing more than sine x squared. Plugging that in, follow the funnel effect. Then we remember to split up our limits into smaller terms, which can help us in the sense that we can use some other identities that we know. In this case, we know that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is merely 1. And plugging in our term here, giving us an answer of 1 half. And that's essentially how to solve limits as x approaches 0 of a term or several terms that look like this. All right, guys, so I hope I helped in this one. And make sure, make sure to look out for other videos of limits in the following chapters.